All right, I'll do one more for this set, then uh, get myself another drink to cool off. I think a little tragically hip might be in order. Assuming I can hold out of the capo. Only had one drink today, too. Same. Oh yeah, there's that shot. You see what happens when I have birthday shots? No, of course. Sundown in the terrace of the prairie We kings of all treasures buried And all you have are the rusted breezes Pushing around the weather vane Zippo ladder sees a killer's face. Maybe someone is standing in a killer's place. Twenty years for nothing, well, that's nothing new besides. No one's interested in something you didn't do. It's a museum and we're all locked up in it after dark. The walls are lined, all yellow, green, sinister. Hung with pictures of our parents, prime minister. We
for my hip friends and friends and pans and friends. Let's take a very short break here and come back with more on this sunny, sunny Thursday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there such a thing as competition in this town? Well, there is anywhere you go. It's definitely not as competitive as Toronto, but because in Toronto you've got a uh, hundred bands all chasing the same nickel. Uh, here, uh, it's a little bit more sparse. You've got more bars than you do uh, bands to fill them in a lot of cases. So it's not quite as bad here as it would be in a larger city like Toronto. But uh, everybody is still looking for work. You know, there the dates fill up quickly here. Uh, if you don't. Whereas in a place like Toronto, you'd have to book three months in advance. Here, you've got to get yourself at least three weeks to a month in advance. Otherwise, the, the dates are gone. So there is a certain degree of competition, but not as, not nearly as tough as the bigger cities. In the bigger cities, often you have to pay to play. Here, you can generally always find work. I don't, I don't seem to have a problem finding work around here. I can usually fill up my calendar pretty quick. Is there a hierarchy? Is there different levels of... Of bars is they're like here's the A list bars here's the B list and here's where anybody you can't get work goes. Um, not when it comes to live music. The live music scene has got a fairly level playing field because most artists are making roughly about the same thing. So it doesn't really matter where they go, they're still making the same amount of money. There are higher end bars, but the higher end bars, uh, they generally tend to stick to the uh, the younger clientele and, and try to keep a DJ. Uh, slash karaoke, whereas the uh, the live music scene tends to play a little bit to the older crowd or the more seasoned crowd, um, and I guess you know you could call them lower end or, or mid range bars, but at the end of the day they still wind up with as many people in them, uh, and uh, the drink prices are no different than they are in the higher end places. So it's really difficult to to sort of negotiate between a high and low end place because everybody's basically charging the same thing and making the same money. If I had to say there was some higher end bars, it would be the, the larger establishments that have been converted from theaters downtown, like the Regent and a few of the other places that are doing uh, a little bit more of the higher end entertainment, getting uh, some of the bigger acts from Toronto. But beyond that, when it comes to uh, straight up live entertainment for local, uh, everybody seems to be on a level playing field in that regard. It doesn't really seem to be a hierarchy as you put What's the, the musician community like? Is it is there cliques? Is it a general group of everybody knows everybody? How would you describe the community of musicians? Uh, it's both. There are cliques, but everybody does know everybody in this town. I've always said this for years that uh, Oshawa and Durham region in general is a hotbed of talent. Some of the best players in the world have come out of here. Some of the best bands, some of my favorite bands have come out of here. Harold Scarum, uh, Killer Dwarfs. There's been really, really great players that have come from the Durham region. and. As long as they all still live in the area, it's not too hard to put yourself together a band featuring some of the best players in town. However, the best players in town also know who the mediocre players are and will generally shy away from them and try to stick to the more high-end players, and that's where the, the click part comes in. Um, you know, like speaks to like, and it always has, so the better players will try to stick to the better players to put in their bands uh, in order to maintain a certain integrity or a certain amount of uh, uh, musical pocketbook, as it were, when they're doing shows. Um, and the mediocre players tend to know they're mediocre and tend to know that they're quite not quite ready to get to the upper echelons yet, and will tend to stick to the, uh, the mid-range players in their bands, the ones that they know are willing to come and play for them, maybe willing to come play for a little bit less money just to, to order to get their chops up. So there are cliques, but they're not unfriendly. There aren't, uh, it's not like a clique in high school where, you know, you're not cool, you can't hang with this crowd. Certainly some of the, the mid-range players get to come up and jam with some of the bigger names and some of the bigger players when they're doing shows. But generally speaking, there is a, there's sort of a, there's a sort of a, you know, a, an upper echelon, a mid echelon, and a lower echelon of, of abilities, talents, and skills. And uh, most of the players tend to know where, what category they fall in for that, and they'll stick to that category. Is there a political nature to the music community in Ottawa? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I would say it pretty much takes care of itself. There's a, if there's a hierarchy, it's a self-formed hierarchy, and I don't think that. Uh, uh, there's any. Uh, it's not. It's not political in nature that there's not uh, the powerful few running the many. Uh, anybody can do this if they've got the, the, the skills, and anybody can do it if they've got the drive and the initiative, and anybody can find their way into any of the echelons of playing good, uh, as long as they've got the chops to, to back it up. Uh, nobody gets refused here. I don't think there's a. Uh, 
there's no segregation anywhere. If you can play, if you can sing, if you can do your job with a certain degree of integrity, then, then you'll find work here. It's not that big of a deal. I've noticed that this summer, being 2013, there just seems to be so much work. I, I've never, I can't say I've ever heard so many people be so yeah. busy so often. Yeah. It's like two, sometimes three gigs in one day. Yeah. And they're willing to travel from a, a, a rib fest in Bowmanville and then rush to Markham that afternoon. Is it that, is it the situation that because it's sunny you make hay or is there just everybody's busy? Uh, everybody I know is busy. When I try to sub out gigs, that I, I, I'm in the same boat. I, I've got sometimes two, sometimes three gigs a day. And friends of mine like Bruce Longman, they're they're constantly working, like just busy, busy. Darren Smith constantly working. Now we've all been fairly busy over the years, but uh, like you said, 2013 for some reason just seems to be a lot busier. And I think that's a testament to what I was saying earlier about the upslide that music, live music, is coming back to the point where more people are hiring more gigs, uh, not just doing it at night, but doing it in the afternoon, in the mid-afternoon, to, to the point where people can get multiple gigs in a day. Um, the idea that when they're sunny, there's hay, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, patio gigs seem to be a, a real big, uh, on a resurgence these days. I don't, I don't remember having this many outdoor patio shows last year or the year before. This year, I've got more than I can handle. I find myself trying to call and sub out some of them that I can't do to other friends who I find out in turn can't do them because they themselves have also got stacks and stacks of gigs as well. So I would agree with you there. There is definitely an upswing in the afternoon work. Uh, as long as the sun is shining, you can definitely find something to do. And there's definitely something live going on in the city, usually in multiple locations. How do you break into the Oshawa community? How do you break into the music business in Oshawa? Um, the best way I've noticed is just come to jams. Uh, there's a lot of people hosting open mic nights and live live entertainment jams, and all you have to do is drag drag your guitar or your whatever down there with you, jump up, jam with the band, show them what you can do, and nine times out of ten, you'll get yourself some work out of it if you can prove that you've got some skills. Usually the band themselves, if they've never heard of you, will now recognize you, will now notice you as being a viable uh, member of the musical community and you'll start getting numbers, you'll start getting calls. It's really not very difficult to break in because there's a lot of opportunities for people just to come out and play. You know, you can, uh, you can just come to a jam and audition yourself. As long as you've got some chops, you will find some work. It's not a difficult scene to break into. I think that kind of goes for all of Durham region, so I don't think it is just Oshawa. I go all across from Bowmanville all the way to Pickering, and there's open mics and open jams everywhere you go, many of which that are being hosted by some really big names in the business, like, for example, Darren Smith and uh, Earl, Earl Warren from, uh, from Moxie. He, he does uh, a lot of stuff, too. Um, so there's really no reason to not find yourself some work as long as you hit one or two of these jams and get out there and get your name out there. That's really all it is, is just getting your name in there. Uh, equipment. I'm noticing that with so many single artist jobs that the level of technology has to become a little more sophisticated, lighter, and it has to be smarter. Yeah. What have you noticed in the last couple of years as a guy who goes out and does solo gigs as far as equipment? I'm hearing you listen, you know, using doublers and all kinds of neat stuff out there. Yeah. Is it easier now to give a big sound than it ever was? Or is yeah, it actually it really is. And I gotta thank the Bose company for that because most of our equipment in the Durham region comes from Long Way. That's our go-to musical store here. Uh, it's basically our go-to musical store in, uh, across Canada. Uh, and for the longest time, Long McQuaid had reasonably good gear, but the Bose company found a way to make it smaller and compact and, and just as big sounding. Their tower speakers. The L2s I'm and L3s. Yeah, the L2s. I'm seeing a lot of those around. And I think finally, Long McQuaid, it, it lit a fire under their asses and got them to start putting line arrays in smaller smaller boxes, which is what I'm using. I'm using a pair of their smaller line arrays, which is really just uh, a, two, two little uh, eight inch speakers and a horn in a very small uh, uh, box that, that really doesn't weigh any more than about 12 pounds, but still has that big, full, spread out sound. Uh, and I, now I'm seeing that go all over the place. So I guess I, you'd really have to thank the Bose company for, for sort of shaming the rest of the, the musical companies into actually starting to put more compact systems together. Because like you said, it's all about the solo acts and single acts and duo acts. And those nobody in, in that category wants to be lugging around great big 100-pound uh, speakers from show to show. A lot of people have smaller cars. They want to be able to fit a full rig and their guitars and two guys into one car. The only way to do that is to shrink it. But by shrinking it, at least in the past, it meant shrinking your sound. 
that's not the case anymore. There's quite quite a bit of big advancement going on now with being able to get big sound out of a small room. How about guitar technology? I mean, if if we're moving back to the acoustic set, um, it used to be that you know you'd have to have a big Guild or a big Gibson to get the big fat rich tones or a Taylor. Um, are you finding? How are you finding the the newer model? mid-range acoustics for live that, that's another spot that's made leaps leaps and bounds as far as advancements go uh, you don't you no longer have to spend three thousand dollars to get a nice big sounding uh, Gibson guitar you can you can go to one of the more medium price names Takamine is a very popular one it's a Japanese company it's the fact the guitar I use uh, really well built guitar and they just really know how to put good electronics in it now uh, they generally use Fishman preamps for the most part which are which are pretty big name preamps right now um, the, uh, the pickups have improved everything is improved to the point where now most of the big tone is being uh, being treated electronically to the point where even if the guitar itself doesn't have that great big washy sound, you can dial it in now because the electronics are a lot more stable and a lot more uh, conducive with getting a big tone. It's very it's very much easier to dial it in now than it was back in the day of uh, just a volume and a tone knob on the guitar. Now you can really shape your tone. And like I said, in that in conjunction with the really good PA systems that are out there now are allowing people to tweak their tone to get it to a really nice, fat, playable level without having to spend a huge amount of money. Well, realizing you want to rest your voice a bit before your next set, um, do you have a website or anything where people can visit you or a channel on YouTube? Uh, actually, I don't. Uh, I don't currently have my uh, website up and going because the thing is, I, I do so many different things that, uh, as a solo artist, that's just a minor aspect of what I do. Um, I guess it probably might pay off to actually get a website going, but you can find me on Facebook uh, under Shane Thomas, S H A Y N E Thomas T H O M A S, and that's pretty much my go-to site now as far as. Uh, 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 media and community. Uh, so if anybody wants to find me out there, you certainly can. I'll certainly add you, and that will. Uh, I keep all of my stuff updated on that. On the